The Undercountry Music News is an excerpt of the weekly internet broadcast, Undercountry Music, which features music from great country artists you won't hear on mainstream radio, as well as a roundup of the most interesting country music news of the week without all the fluff. To listen and subscribe to the full weekly episode, please visit undercountrymusic.com or simply subscribe to the Undercountry Music Podcast on iTunes. Let's get into it. Where was I? Oh, yes. It is time for the Undercountry Music News. The Undercountry Music News is the portion of the show where I go on to Google and I search the term Country Music News so that I can find you the essential Country Music News of the Week. Of the past week, I can't report on the future week, unfortunately. I'm, I'm working on that, though. I can make predictions. Sometimes they're true. Most times they're not. Who knows in this crazy, wacky world of country music? Anyway, here's the deal. Whatever comes up on the first page of Google under the search term country music news, I go on there and I... Try to see, you know, what real news stories they have. And unfortunately, most of the time, it's just uh, filler, junk, garbage, recipes. Uh, you know, look at this shack out in the middle of the woods. Or, you know, Tyler Farr dreams about a Grammy next year. Blah, 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 freaking blah. Well, my job is to go onto these websites and find the real country music news. Uh, you know, not, not the People magazine junk and fluff. So I go to each one and find the one or two good stories here, one or two good stories there, and I compile them all into this big old newsy snot ball, <coughs> otherwise known as the Undercountry Music News. And if I go onto a website and it's supposed to have country music news and all they got is the People magazine fluff and junk and press releases, then I reward them with the Undercountry Music News Wet Belch of the Week, which sounds a little something like this. Uh... <coughs> Sometimes it's nicer. Sometimes it's more full, more rich. But, you know, we'll, we'll see how that one did on playback. Anyway, we're going to get into it here. Oh, by the way, if you're listening to just the news portion of the show on either Spreaker or who knows, I'm, I'm still on uh, my iHeartRadio uh, submission is still pending for the Undercountry Music News. But I do take out the banjos in the background. So, uh, you know, because they don't want music on those. It's talk only. So uh, if you're listening to just the news portion, then uh, you probably hear a god-awful sound in the background. Sounds like bacon frying underwater. Well, that's my heater, and uh, the heater is because it's freaking cold in here, so deal with it. <laughs> I'm not apologizing for staying warm while I do the show. For those of you listening with banjos in the back right now, uh, you can't hear the heater, and that's why I put banjos in the back. Duh. Anyway. Going to go over to CMT, Country Music Television. Let's see what they've got. <coughs> they've got the Under Country Music News, Wet Belt of the Week. They had nothing. Zippo, Jack, Bupkis. All right, screw them. Moving along. Taste of Country. Farm Aid announces the date for their 30th anniversary concert, and it will be September 19th, 2015, by the way. Farm Aid was originally put together by Willie Nelson, John Mellencamp, and Neil Young to highlight the plight of the American farmer. Now, these days, it also promotes the good food movement, which promotes organic alternatives to factory farming. Man. And they still have not announced the location, just the date. I guess it'll be wherever you are, man. Past the granola. Moving along to Country Weekly, Kimberly Schlappman from Little Big Town has come out with a recipe book like every other woman in country music. <sighs> well, that's it. That's all they've got over there at Country Weekly. I, I almost feel like giving them the belch, but, you know, it. The low-hanging fruit, you know. GAC, Great American Country. I, I, You know what? I don't know what's going on around here, but 
There's not one single real news story about country music posted over at Great American Country. What is it? Did President's Day throw everything off? <laughs> All right, I could muster one for that. Moving along to the 615. Former head of RCA Records, Joe Gallant, has received the Bob Kingsley Living Legend Award, basically because he helped make a buttload of country stars and other stars gajillionaires. I told you I was sick. Those on hand to suck up were Kenny Chesney, Sarah Evans, Ronnie Dunn, Phil Vassar, Ronnie Millsap, KT Osling, Kix Brooks, Lori, Lori Morgan, and Kelly Pickler. You can read a bunch about this guy's rise through the ranks at RCA over at the 615. By the way, the 615 is a subsection of billboard.com. So what, what you'd probably want to do, do a Google search for country music news like I did, and there'll be about like five results down or something like that. Anyway, kicking over to the boot, Christina Vinson, boot writer at large, brings us probably the most authentic country music news story so far this week. As she reports on Florida Georgia Line filing a countersuit against the Country Explosion Festival. Uh, allegedly, they got sued by the Country Explosion Festival um, after the duo had supposedly received a 50% deposit to perform, and then the balance check bounced. Or had a stop payment or something. Anyway, it didn't clear. Anyway, Florida Georgia Line still played the show, and they figured they'd work out the legalities later. And now they're in. The, I guess the promoters suing them for defamation of character, breach of contract, and things like that because they went and uh, you know put out an an alert to people like, "Hey, uh, we had some bad stuff happen dealing with this guy uh, at the." You know, country explosion thing. The promoter suing them for defamation, and uh, and it's a big legal mess. You can read all about it over at the boot. I'm not going to try to lay it all out here for you, but you can go into that big tangle of yarn over there if that's your thing. Okay, Rolling Stone Country. You can hear Dwight Yoakam's new single, Second Hand Heart. I had a listen. Sounded to me like Dwight singing with John Mellencamp's band. Sounds like he's singing over Little Pink Houses. But it's all right. Wasn't the worst thing I've ever heard. You know, I had some uh, good rock and guitars in it, and it's certainly better than most of the junk on the radio these days. I mean, it didn't blow me away. I don't have to have it. But, you know, hopefully this will get some airplay for old Dwight. And that's about all I got for country music news this week. This has been your Under Country Music News. News, news, news. Thank you for listening to the Under Country Music News. The Under Country Music News is just a small excerpt of the weekly internet broadcast Under Country Music, where I play music and have great interviews by lesser-known original country acts, get on over to undercountrymusic.com where you can listen and subscribe. Stay under, stay country.